Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, and with our next video on Apache Iceberg, I want to talk about time travel. So time travel is the ability to query the table as it was at previous points in time. Okay, and the reason may be because um, you want to query the data before certain data was added or before certain data was removed. You know, you or you want to just query it, the data as consistently as when you ran certain operations before. Um, so that's what time traveling can do. Okay, particularly if you're testing like a machine learning model and you want to see like the differences. So you want to actually use the exact same data in the exact same form that it was when you last tested it. So you want to like time travel back to before all this new data was added to that data set. Okay, and there's a couple different ways you can do this. And again, it's the ability to query the table as the table was, not as the table is. And again, you can use this to make sure that machine learning is run consistently on, on consistent data. You could use it to um, avoid the need for snapshotting, okay, the table. So what a lot of people will do since they don't have time travel is that they just couldn't, every time uh, before they ingest like new data, they'll create a CTAS to create like table as of this date, table as of this date. And then you end up having all these snapshots of the table at certain points, but they're all literally separate tables. So you're multiplying that data several times. Uh, with time travel, we can avoid that replication of that data. Okay, uh, for control quality control to assess data before and after updates, you can go back and take a look at the data before the update, after the update, pinpoint when there was a problem, a lot of really cool stuff. Now some limitations. You can only time travel to valid snapshots. So if you expire snapshots, um, then you can't time travel to it. Now, if you're using Dremio as your query engine to uh, time travel, the syntax is going to be uh, select and then you would write your select statement, but then you would write at. So you're saying at this timestamp and then you would include a timestamp, select t at snapshot, and then you would put like a snapshot ID. Uh, so you would have to get that snapshot ID. You can query the metadata to figure out what's the ID for the snapshot you want to time travel back to. If you're time traveling with Spark, okay, uh, what you can do is you can use Java, okay, um, so you can, what you would do is you would use like spark.read, uh, dot option as of timestamp that you put in the timestamp, or you can say as of snapshot ID, ID. Um, although with the release of point 14, there is now SQL syntax for iceberg. Okay. Now there is as of syntax. Okay. And what I'll do is actually, I'll just bring up a quick example of that. So here we're looking at the iceberg documentation. So just looking to show you, I'll take a look at the time travel section of the documentation. And now when you're in Spark, because with point 14, they did add that SQL syntax for Spark, you would just do something like this. You would just say like uh, timestamp as of, and then you would include the timestamp and version as of. So always just keep in mind, like, what is the context? Are you doing this in Dremio? Are you doing this Spark? Uh, and then same thing with like other engines. Other engines may not even support time travel and may have different syntax for time travel. So always make sure you read the documentation of the tools you're using with your iceberg tables. So now coming back to our regularly scheduled programming, um, in our next video, we'll be talking about maintaining iceberg tables. Like what are the kind of things you want to do to make sure that your iceberg tables are always nice and performant. Um, in the future, you'll have services like Dremio Arctic that will take care of a lot of this for you. So basically uh, down the road, uh, if you haven't tried out Dremio's Arctic service yet, do check that out. It's really cool. Um, but that'll be a thing that'll be available to you in the future to actually handle a lot of these things we'll talk about in this upcoming video. Um, but for now, we can just main manually maintain our tables, do a little bit of pruning, a little bit of maintenance. Um, luckily, the, the Iceberg API makes this generally fairly pretty easy and straightforward. Um, so that way, uh, they provide you plenty of utilities to make the process painless as possible. So I'll see you guys there.